Governor Jim Pillen makes a stop in the Panhandle over the weekend with a major emphasis on his quest to provide more property tax relief for Nebraskans. KNEP.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, during a town hall meeting in Scottsbluff Saturday, prior to the Cattlemen's Ball, Nebraska Governor Jim Pillen said he hopes to trim state spending by at least half a billion dollars in the next couple of years and capture more federal dollars for property tax relief. So we've said no to all that, and since that time we are working to run government like a business. You can change processes and improve processes so we're we are decreasing spending and improving services. Decreasing spending, improving services. Uh, by the end of next year, we will have decreased the state expenses from previous year by $500 million. Never been done in the history of our state. Pillen echoed his previous plan for tax relief that failed to garner enough senators for support this past spring. This series of town halls are designed to drum up enough support so at least 33 lawmakers will support the governor during an expected special session for property tax relief. Pillen said he expects to call a special session before school starts in August. Well, the city of Scottsdale has approved zoning changes for several new blighted and substandard areas to make it easier to get tax increment financing, known as TIF, to help pay for improvements. During last Monday's council meeting, tracts of land near 5th Avenue and 27th Street and Highway 26 and 40th Street were changed. Councilmember Betsy Vidlack asked Development Services Director Zach Globius if there were any drawbacks. Is there any risk to increasing that amount closer to the 35% downside? No, with annexation, you know, you decrease it, you can remove areas from this status, so we'll be sure to keep an eye on it. And as far as I know, we've never taken any property that's been improved on out of the blend and substandard mm -hmm. percentage. So we could do some work there to reduce that number too. After brief discussions, the council approved the changes, which brought the total percentage of the city with the designation to more than 31%. By state law, the maximum percentage of a first-class city that can be classified as blighted and substandard is 35%. We'll have more news right after this. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. Welcome back. The Village of Morrill is on the hunt for a community member to fill some big shoes. Tomorrow, the Board of Trustees plans to accept the resignation of member Paul Adams. Afterwards, the trustees will approve the advertisement of vacancy to the board. For more information, you can contact the Village of Morrill offices. While supporters of the effort to legalize medical cannabis are making a final push to get two ballot initiatives before voters in November. Nebraskans for medical marijuana say they've met the state requirement of collecting 5% of the voters' signatures in at least 38 Nebraska counties. However, they're short of their goal of gathering 87,000 valid signatures on each petition, as well as additional overage. Campaign manager Krista Egger says the group has not had millions of dollars in funding like other campaigns, so their efforts have been mostly grassroots. For each of the petitions, Nebraska Medical Marijuana has been circulating. Egger says they need to gather over 30,000 signatures or more by the July 3rd deadline 
to ensure the questions make it onto the general election ballot. And recent Western Nebraska Community College graduate Jordan Underwood of Oshkosh was named a Distinguished Chapter Member by Phi Theta Kappa National Honor Society. The awarded members are selected based on a student's embodiment of the hallmarks of the society through active participation in their chapter. It is awarded to students with exceptional leadership, scholarship service, and fellowship with their chapter and community. Only 30 students are recognized nationwide each year. To sum up the past 20 years in one word, exceptional. It's one of our core values. But our people have been truly exceptional. Our customer support has been exceptional. In 20 years, where will Allo be? When we started, we were just a business fiber company. Then the demand came from residential. Now the products of both business and residential just continue to expand. We've got to start with customers' needs and always work backwards. The customers will tell us and our teammates will take us there. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. Going to hit the rewind button on some all-star basketball plus summer baseball in the region continues. Got bogged down with a Monday holiday, then a full week of all-star activities. Recap the football and volleyball early last week. So let's go back a few weeks now, back to Friday, May 24th, for this year's Panhandle Prep All-Star Basketball games that were played at Scotts Bluff High School in the girls' game. Paige Horn of Scotts Bluff leading the blue team to a 24-point win over the Red Squad. Horn had a game-high 25 points. The former Bearcat already back east now to start summer workouts at Omaha to get her Division I career started. The girls' three-point winner that night was Lily Nichols of Wheatland. For the boys' game, a competitive finish in the fourth quarter with the red team holding off the blue 91-87. Levi Curtis of Douglas, Wyoming winning MVP honors with 23 points. Curtis doubled up on the night as he also won the dunk contest. Sydney's Isaac Doty of the blue team led all scorers with 25 points. Jackson Howard of Gehring winning the three-point contest for the boys. Neil Baker and Panhandle Prep with their 30th annual All-Star Basketball Games. That pretty much kicked off the All-Star circuit for the region this year. What about the baseball scene here locally? The Western Nebraska Pioneers won two of three over the weekend at home, taking the series from the game day Angels yesterday with a 6-2 win. Jaden Onaka and Michael Simeon the win and save on the hill. The Pios have today off before hosting the Liberal BJs in a pair tomorrow. And Wednesday, after another off day on Thursday, they'll be on the road from Friday through next Wednesday. And in Legion Baseball, the West Coast Zephyrs got a pair of much-needed wins on Sunday, sweeping Bridgeport in a doubleheader at Cleveland Field. The Zephyrs will host a big double dip tomorrow night against North Platte. We'll have coverage on 107.3 The Trail. The stream at khyyfm.com at about 445 for pregame. They'll be in Casper on Wednesday. Wesco and Gehring with their College World Series trips east later in the week. That's the latest today from right here at the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. 
Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Let's take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. High Plains Auto Club presents the 25th Annual Rock and Roll Father's Day Classic Friday, June 14th. Registration begins at 2 p.m. at the Gearing Civic Center. Welcome barbecue, cruise for cash, ice cream social. Saturday, June 15th, parade downtown Gearing at 9 a.m. Show and shine at Five Rocks from 10 to 4 and awards banquet. To enter, go to highplainsautoclub.com or call 641-4849. This event is sponsored by Next Level Restoration, Gearing Civic Center, Rural Radio, Fly United Airlines, operated by SkyWest, with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver, along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today, and remember, United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And Father Tonight, Japanese performance art and traditions accompanied the grand opening of Japanese Hall at the Legacy of the Plains Museum this weekend, with hundreds on hand for the celebration. In addition to remarks by local, state, and international dignitaries Saturday, members of Japanese-American families that settled in the area more than a century ago broke open the lid of a ceremony sake barrel, marking the official opening of the hall and exhibits inside. Vicki Sakura Schlaffer, 
A driving force behind the project to save and restore the hall for many years told those in the crowd it was the end of a long journey that was a labor of love and respect, not only of the Japanese and Japanese Americans, but everyone in the region who supported their communities. The most important thing is we are here for the Issei, the Nisei, and some of the Sanseis that have passed before us. And we are saving this legacy for our children because I want my children um, and your children and the people of the valley to know what great support they received from the people of this area and of the high plains. Reflecting on the impact of the new exhibit, Platte Valley Bank CEO Hod Cosman said it will be a beacon for heritage, tradition and culture and that the history and stories of Japanese Americans who have settled here have entered the realm of forever. It has become and will always be a beacon for history and heritage and tradition and culture and preservation and teaching and remembering. Each display will be a part of, is a part of someone's life. They all tell a story and chronicle a life journey. Each heirloom creates a mental picture of a family's life and experiences. Within these walls are so many voices from, uh, from the past and they must always be able to speak and they will never be lost. The end of the ceremony was just the beginning of the festivities throughout the day, which included performances by the JACL Dance Troupe, Denver Taiko Drum Troupe, and Tomoko Shepherd of Omaha performing on the Kato, the National Instrument of Japan. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.